Hey, Mr. Seegers, can you tell me about horizontal and vertical imbalance? S sure. I mean, really, how hard could that possibly be? I don't know. I came out here like a Monday or something. I, I think it's Thursday. I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we are going to look at applying tolerance for horizontal and vertical prismatic imbalance. Let's just begin right there, shall we? Let's simplify the language a little bit and say that we're just going to look at the standards for PDs and OCs. Now, fair warning here, this is going to be one hell of a bumpy ride, so hang on tight. Because it turns out that the more you dig into the standards for PDs and OCs, well, the less they make any sense at all. Let's start at the beginning, because the beginning is always a good place to start. If you have not already watched part one and part two in this series about verification, final inspection, you simply must do that before you try to watch this one, because if you don't, you're going to have absolutely no idea what's going on. ANSI is a subjective measure, and I'm not going to go through all this again. If you watch parts one and two, you'll understand that there's a difference between a subjective and an objective measure, and a subjective measure is open to human interpretation. ANSI is not exact, it's not a law, it's not a rule, it's not a fact, or an absolute. Period. Hence, it is not really a standard or an actual tolerance. I mean, so important to get your head around, and, and actually kind of hard to do, for a lot of different reasons. From parts one and part two, once again, no one is going to die here. When you grasp the concept of subjective versus objective, and you realize that ANSI is not really a standard or an actual application of real tolerance, you start getting out of the crazy stuff. You, you start getting away from thinking that they're optical police and that people are gonna come and arrest you if you fill a expired prescription. All the Looney Tunes stuff, when you start getting your head around this, goes away. We are not building a 737 engine. We're not building a surgical robotic assistant. We're making and checking in a pair of glasses. And there is a huge difference between those things. So it's no surprise that, as always, making these decisions about what passes, what fails, how you interpret the range of powers that are on a lens, it all comes down to you, and most important, you understanding what you're doing. Straight from the quick guide, there are the guidelines for vertical and for horizontal. Now, why are there two different ones? Vertical we can do per lens. Horizontal always works as a combination or combined or total amount. Now, let's get this out of the way. Uh, the quick guide shows a different set for progressive lenses. Uh, we're going to just ignore that completely. For a progressive, really simple, you have one millimeter one time in any direction. Simply look at your fitting cross. Generally speaking, one millimeter one time any direction, you're probably going to be okay. It can be a millimeter high, millimeter high, millimeter over, millimeter over. Probably going to get away with it. Anything beyond that, it doesn't matter. Power, position, whatever. Because of the design of the progressive, it's probably not going to work. Now, let's cut to the chase here. Uh, vertical less than 3.375. We're not even going to look at that one because, well, it doesn't make any sense. We're not going to look at this one either. And why doesn't that make sense? 
because it's built off of an obscure idea where you're marking and then tapping and then marking again and then taking out a, looking inside the lens meter and moving it over to an imaginary 0.33 or 0.67 prism ring in the lens meter that doesn't exist. If you've got less than three, 375 or less than 275, an auto lens meter can't pick up 0.33. We tried it at the lab, we moved it around, it's jumping all over the place, 37, 38, 33. It, it can't even pick up that. And here, okay, look, look, inside there's, there is an LM101. Uh, let's agree we got our one ring and I guess we could consider those tick marks in the end of that line a half, but you know, there is no 0.33 or 0.67 in there. So we're just going to um, leave that one to the side. ANSI full, you probably don't have access to that, but ANSI full sort of kind of pretends it has some kind of directions or instructions on how to do this. But let me point out that along with the missing 0.33 and 0.67 prism rings in the lens meter, it doesn't account in any way for monocular PDs. It doesn't seem to, and I may be interpreting this incorrectly, but it doesn't um, take into account canceling and compounding. It doesn't take into account if you had one lens that was absolutely perfect and one lens that's way off. It doesn't take into account higher powers, and I'm about to show you that in just a second. It assumes that we can discern a half a millimeter when in fact we probably can't. A lens meter dot, the ink pen dot that you put on the lens is probably about a millimeter wide. PD sticks are graduated in one millimeter steps. And of course we have the mystery one third diopter and that's just part of why the ANSI guidelines um, don't really work. Let's start this off with an extremely realistic scenario. UPS has come and gone, FedEx has come and gone, you've opened up the boxes from all of the different labs that you use, you've matched up the jobs to the job tray, and it's time to check the work in. The step-by-step -step for that is covered in part one, so we're not gonna go into each and individual step. Remembering that step one is always to simply look at the glasses. After that, we generally jump to the lens meter. We look for what we are supposed to have. And we do our lens meter waltz. And we move to our left and we do our lens meter waltz and we get everything. And we tap. We check what we are supposed to have, 64 or 32, 33, whatever it is, binocular PD. We measure between our dots. I needed 58, I've got 58, we're done, we move on. If it was 32, 34, I take my layout chart and I center everything up and I read it. I've got 32 on the right, 34 on my left good to go, finish my verification process, call the customer and say, come pick up your glasses. If I looked at these glasses and my two center dots don't appear where they're supposed to, let's say they're both way over here or way over here, it is possible that they would still be 64 millimeters apart they would match the PD required, but they wouldn't actually be in front of the person's eyes. So pay attention to that when you're looking at them, make sure things kind of look right. Generally, your OC dots are gonna be slightly inward from the center line of the frame uh, for indecentration. If I am looking at what I needed versus what I received, and they don't match, that is when we're gonna be looking at horizontal or PD errors. If when I went from this lens to this lens, my OCs were either high or low, if I had to move my spectacle table up and down to get that in, that is going to be an OC placement error. And that is when we use our vertical rule. Because you are never ever going to know that there is a problem until you do this step, you will always begin with your lens meter marks. 
yeah, you could mark up first and then do this, but that's kind of repetitive because 95% of the time everything works out fine. So at this point, it might be a really good idea to go ahead and mark up what you actually wanted versus what you actually have. Use your layout chart. You can use that for both your monocular PD and your heights as well. Line everything up and put a tick mark where things should be. Then we can take our PD stick, come up with a difference between those two, work Prentice's formula and solve the problem. For vertical, which is where we're starting, unless you specified an OC height, that will generally be at half the B. If you specified an OC height, well, you would start there. There's so much just to that one line. Let's move over to the other whiteboard and look at that, and then we'll come back here and run through the steps. I think that we can all agree that we always take PDs, right? We either have our corneal reflex pupillometer or our nice OptiCam, but we only sometimes take OCs. We actually do have a really nice industry standard, a way that every single place it does it, every lab agrees, that unless an OC is specified, the OC is placed at half the B of the frame. If, big if, 0.33 is a good guideline, then, well, anything greater than 3.25, we could maybe consider OCs. Uh, 3.5 times more than one millimeter movement divided by TZ about 0.35, 35 is greater than 33. So, Maybe this is a good point to start thinking about them, but it turns out that really has little to do with it. Give me a second. Now, for those few of you out there on social media who say, I take an OC for every single job and every single lens. Okay, don't do that. Okay, we, do, we don't do that. We don't take an OC for every single lens, every single power. You are simply asking for trouble. The industry standard is placing it at half the B. Everyone can tolerate that. Give me one more second. And if you are not the one who sees that person next time, who sees that person's glasses the next time, you're just asking for trouble. Because what matters here, what you're looking at, what real OC vertical imbalance is about, it's about the OCs being on the same plane. That's what matters. Okay, if they're both at half the B, you're good. If you give an OC height of 15, it's 15, 15, you're good. 18, 18, you're good. If you have half a B and one OC is up and one is down, it's no good. They aren't on the same plane. That's when you're going to get problems. If you order 1515, you get 1415. They were made wrong. The layout work was incorrect. You would send that job back to the lab to be remade. Even worse, you got some high power. You chose to do a little OC bump 1818. You got in 1615. Oh, no, 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 no. Job was made wrong. It would go back to the lab. And this, to a certain extent, is even irregardless of power. Again, this is this isn't really a great rule of thumb. Even higher powers, as long as they are on the same plane, it doesn't matter that much. Whew. Right? Yeah, I know. There's just so much going on. And with that, I, I, I genuinely believe that this particular piece, this part three of verification, final inspection, application of guidelines, really is kind of like level two stuff. If you don't have a really firm understanding of everything that came before this, this, this really genuinely isn't gonna make sense to you. But let's move on anyway. Okay, uh, we must determine the power at 90 for vertical imbalance issues. We do that using the powers in oblique meridians formula. Uh, there's a video for that. There's some apps that are available to calculate that for you. Again, if you don't understand even what that is and why you would do that, then you're kind of in the wrong place at this point. We would not be looking at this. We would not be talking about this. We would not be trying to apply a guideline, a standard or a tolerance or measure anything if we didn't think that something was wrong. 
You're doing your verification. You've got the glasses. You're going between the right and the left and the right and the left in the lens meter. One OC is up here and one's down here. It's like, rut row, something's wrong. Can we get away with this? Is this enough that it's gonna matter? Well, let's find out. We do that by starting by marking the OC in the strongest lens. You just figured that out. Put that lens in the lens meter. In this case, my left is my stronger one. And mark your OC. You're gonna have your three lens meter dots. Take the glasses, move them over to the other lens. Do not move the spectacle table. And give it a tap. Now you're gonna have a set of three marks and a set of three marks on the same plane. Now go ahead and move your spectacle table. Do your lens meter waltz, get everything in perfect target. Tap again. Now you're gonna have another set of marks. Those might be above or those might be below. Measure the distance between the center of the first set and the second set. If you have one millimeter or less of separation, according to ANSI, the job passes. According to ANSI, you could just call up your customer and say, hey, good to go, come on in. Now let me show you something. If my right's a 750, my left is a seven, and I'm off by one millimeter, seven diopters off one millimeter, seven, seven divided by 10 to correct for centimeters to meters, I've got 0.7, almost three quarters of a diopter of error. Now, our tolerance, according to ANSI, for vertical is 0.33. I've got almost three quarters of a diopter here. But according to ANSI, that would pass. I've got more than double the amount that they show as tolerance. But according to them, because this millimeter separation is one or less, these glasses could pass off and go to a customer. This is where it comes down to you, right? ANSI is not the final arbitrator here. You are. You are the one who makes the decisions on what passes and what doesn't. Because of what we talked about here, for vertical, applying Prentice's formula wouldn't even apply. Think about it, right? And, and actually, let's, let's take that one, one step further and let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, and then we'll get to horizontal. All right, dog chasing tail part 73. If we follow the rules, our OC is gonna be at half the B as an industry standard, unless an OC height has been indicated. I mark up my stronger lens first. I have only got this one set of reference points, my OC mark, I don't have two. By becoming a single anchor point for this job because it's the stronger lens, HCM is zero, right? P is equal to D times HCM. I'm not moving this. I put one single dot on here. I don't go back to this again and put another one and go back and forth because I'm starting with the stronger one as an anchor. HCM is equal to zero. You simply have these two marks, the millimeter rule or what we would prefer to see, the 0.33 rule. For horizontal, unlike vertical, you are comparing two things. You're comparing what you ordered to what you actually received. And you are balancing or, or working with both lenses, the power in both lenses, the positions in both lenses, not just an individual one as a anchor point like we did with vertical. Now, as I said a couple of minutes ago, you always start with basic verification. So you're always going to have your lens meter dots. Everything's targeted up perfectly in the lens meter, you tap it, and we're gonna use a red asterisk for that marking. Now, if you haven't done so already, you think there's a problem, you know there's a problem, go ahead and mark what you wanted. Use a layout chart, do monocular PDs. If you have 64, go 32, 32. And I would strongly urge you to use a different color. Your lens meter ink pens may be white, may be black, may be red. Choose a different AR pen color so that you can tell the two apart. ANSI says that you have two and a half millimeters of wiggle room in powers even greater than 275. And just take what you have, subtract what you wanted, 
in any combination that falls two and a half millimeters or under, according to ANSI, passes. Let's take a look at something. Stock single vision lenses, we have a right of a minus eight and a left of a minus 950. Your actual customer PD in reality is a 3234. Called up the lab, called this job in, they pulled some stock lenses. Next morning you get the job back, you go through your verification, something doesn't look right, you lay everything up, you've got your red tick mark and your blue, your red and your blue, and it turns out you got a 31 and a 32.5. It's right there. ANSI says, you're good to go. Call up that customer, tell them to come pick up their glasses. If I've got eight diopters and I'm off one millimeter, I end up with an error of 0.8. If I've got nine and a half diopters and I'm off one and a half millimeters, I end up with an error of 1.4. Base out, base out. Compounds, we're just following Prentice's formula and applying the rules of how you write out compounded prism error. I've got 2.2 in the right, 2.2 in the left. What does ANSI say is a standard? 0.67. Do you think your customer is going to be happy wearing that? Because you're off only one and a half and one, that's a total of two and a half. Think that's a good idea? Probably not, all right? That is why this all comes down to you. I am gonna wipe the board clean one more time and I am going to do my very best to give you some guidelines and some common sense ideas that will help you make the final decision. I can't make those for you. A journey that I thought may never end. Welcome to the Laramie K Optician Works Common Sense Guide for OC and PD Errors. Rule number one is our favorite. Wrong is wrong. If you ordered a job with PDs of 34, 34, you dot things up and it comes in at 30, 30. They were made wrong. Somebody did the layout work wrong. Send them back and get them made right. We're not gonna go through all this. Rule number two is it is my true honest belief that for most of us, we can accurately and repeatedly discern about one millimeter. Our PD sticks are one millimeter. Our layout charts are divided in one millimeter. Now, we've watched one, we've watched two, we've watched the beginning of this one. We now understand the difference between a subjective and an objective measure. We understand that everything connected to lenses, lens power, lab work, layout, okay? It's all open to human interpretation. Hence, there are no rules except that what you choose to make them. Now, for powers from Plano to plus or minus 25, all I can say is shame on you. Um, those shouldn't even exist. They shouldn't be in stock. Um, you can get 0.25 out of a demo lens. That's just ridiculous. That's taking advantage of people. Uh, 50 to 150, honestly, close is generally pretty darned good. Unless somebody didn't even try, I mean, they didn't even go for the center of the frame or the block. Um, if you dotted things up and one was like here and here, you didn't even get cut out or something. One of those horrible uh, vision care plan labs where the people have no idea what they're doing. Well, then you might have a problem. But you know, if you aim for the middle of a 150 in the middle of a 150 in the frame, you know, you're probably gonna be just fine. But if you wish to dig in deeper, of course you're welcome to. For OCs in our weaker lens, and the power is greater than 325, 350 and up, at 90 you are allowed exactly nothing. It's just that simple, anything over, 3.25 is 350, 3.50, more than one millimeter. It just, you're automatically out of that range, okay? So if you're more than that, see number one, wrong is wrong, send it back and get it remade right. If the OC in the weaker lens is around 325, well, then you want your lens meters dots to touch 
or best overlap or perfectly overlap is one. That's what you want to see. That's good. Then you're going to be okay. The, the, the OCs in each of those eyes are on the same plane or close enough that you're going to be okay. Less than 325 to the 150, you're going to kind of have to feel your way. I can't really tell you. I think we kind of have one rule for PDs. If both lenses at 180 are greater than 325, 350, you are allowed zero. It, it, again, if you just work it out uh, as a perfect rule of thumb, if you have greater than 350, your PD needs to be spot on. If it's not, the job was probably made wrong, layout error, send it back and have it made right. Beyond that, because everything we've been talking about is subjective and open to human interpretation and glasses are worn by humans, any other scenario for a PD, you simply need to work it out. And I mean work out the whole thing, practice this formula with your prism drawings and your compounding and your canceling. You could have one lens that's right and one that's wrong. You could have Plano at 180. I can't cover all the possible scenarios. It is finally time to put OC and PD errors to rest and wrap up our three-part series on final inspection and verification. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching me on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Watching us on Facebook, please give us a like. Feel free to leave a comment. Make sure that every lens that you're doing verification and final inspection on comes from Laramie K. And I will see you again next week. Thank <laughs> you.